Take my bride, let's go for a ride in my new fangled automobile. This where we will go. Nobody knows, but it's sure a great way to feel. Behind the wheel of the speed me to steal, it's my new fangled automobile. Hello and welcome to Vintage Car History. I'm Wild Bill. There are stories found in the Bible that most people have heard about. Adam and Eve, Noah's Ark, the Tower of Babel. Whatever your personal religious persuasion might be, you most likely are at least aware of these stories. And the story of Jacob and Esau are among these stories. The older brother selling his birthright to his younger brother for a bowl of stew. Now, with this particular story, it might be difficult to see how something like that could happen in the modern world. Yet it did happen. A man did, in fact, sell his birthright for a bowl of stew in the vintage car era. So let's look at the history of how that came about and tell the story of Ransom Eli Olds. He was born in 1864 to a family of tinkerers, the youngest of four sons. His father, Pliny, not the elder, was a skilled laborer that would get work where he could find it, mostly involving blacksmithing or some kind of metal fabrication. His family moved to Lansing, Michigan from Ohio when Ransom was a teenager, and his father started a small machine shop in 1880. His two oldest brothers didn't make the move, as they had already left the nest, but number three, Wallace and young Ranny, joined in on the new family venture. The shop made and repaired small steam engines and, like many future car geniuses, Ransom absorbed every hands-on lesson that his father and the shop could teach him. Ranny had an inventive mind and before long he had spent most of his time tinkering in the shop rather than attend to his school studies. So he dropped out of high school and went full-time as a machinist. This worked out to both his and the family business's advantage. Ranny applied himself to coming up with a better steam engine and hit pay dirt. In one of those convergent engineering situations, a teenage Ransom Olds invented a gas-fired flash tube boiler to go with his compound steam engine. Leon Serpilly had done this in France at about the same time and, like Benz and Daimler, neither was aware of the other's work. Yet Ranny's system was successful and the small family business grew substantially as a result of selling thousands of steam engines and boilers. It was around 1887 that he began what would be his lifelong focus of making his vision of an automobile. His first machine was, like Daimler, a converted horse carriage. But Ranny put two engines in his running off of his very efficient boiler, and the car was pretty fast as a result. Able to hit 15 miles an hour without breaking a sweat. No small feat in 1887. A turning point in his life came in 1893 when he attended the Chicago World's Fair. He saw small two and four stroke internal combustion engines at the fair and made the decision to pursue that technology. It made sense. Why burn gas to make steam and then use the steam when you can just burn the gas and not lose so much energy in the transition. Olds turned his inventive mind in the gas engine's direction and by 1896 had designed and patented his own. His engine was radically different from other gas engines of the time. His design used a side valve system that operated from a cam driven from the crankshaft. This allowed the thing to spin much faster than other engines since the valve action did not intrude into the actual combustion cylinder. With this advantage, Ransom made the piston itself longer, adding a skirt to the bottom and several rings around it to seal the cylinder more effectively. The end result was an engine that could produce good power and torque and do it for a lot less engine size. Five horsepower from an engine weighing 25% less than the competition and less weight to carry means more results from your horsepower. He built a car around this engine and put it on the road in 1896. It was light and powerful, able to cruise at 25 miles an hour and could push 30 if it had to. True, it had tiller steering, so going that fast would be scary, but the car was quite sensational and gathered a lot of attention. 
the family decided to shift gears and the family machine shop became the Olds Motor Vehicle Company in 1897. Now the machine shop was successful in making money, but not enough to just start making cars. Granny was a brilliant and inventive engineer, but his skills in business were not comparable. He did take some classes on business management, but for him, it was simply not his interest. So, like many before and since, he found someone who would both front the money to establish the company and run the business side of things. In this case, a real estate investor named Edward Sparrow. For the next two years, Sparrow funded the company, which also nearly bankrupted several times in the process. The problems were many, but the main issue was capacity. The Olds Company could not fulfill the orders. By the end of 1898, Olds had managed to make six cars, yet over 100 had been ordered. Mr. Sparrow was getting rather impatient with this, as were the potential customers without cars to buy. Sparrow knew that more money was needed and knew where to get it. He tapped the shoulder of an old friend, a Mr. Samuel Smith, and made an offer. Take ownership of the company and use Ransom for what he's good at, designing cars. And in 1899, the deal was made. A new company, the Olds Motor Works, was founded in 1899. Meanwhile, Ransom was getting hungry. Yes, he was designing cars, but no one was making money from it, including him. Sparrow could not support Olds out of hand. He did not have that kind of liquid capital. But Smith did, and could make sure that both Olds and the company had the money to build the factory it would take to become a major player in the world of cars. But it would come with a deep and lasting price. On the surface, this is a great thing for Olds. Sam Smith had loads of money and wasn't afraid to use it. As the new president of the Olds Motor Works, he first relocated the company to Detroit, which was, at this time, a great engineering and manufacturing center to build a company. Next, he financed and built a factory that could handle the customer demands. All Ranny had to do was design the cars and figure out how to build them in his new factory. Old signed away much of his ownership in the process, but was being paid money, so it was okay with him. Except that Sam Smith was president and not him. Ransom began to see that he was losing control, but he was still a gifted and talented engineer, and thus he fought back on his own terms. Ransom put his energy in both a new car design and a way to make it. He came up with a simple car with a simple gas engine, and it was a smash hit, the curved dash Oldsmobile. He also put his mind to how to make many of them, and with the new factory in hand, created the first true mass-produced car in the world. He did borrow some principles laid down by Henry Leland, but rather than complete precision, he relied on calculated tolerance. Design it simple so that things can fit kind of loose and still work fine. Also, he applied the principle of the assembly line for the first time in automotive history. In his assembly, car frames were placed on a station, and there were many dozens of stations, and the work team would build the car on the spot, with parts needed being brought on a specific time schedule. Sam Smith was more than impressed, and pumped even more money into advertising this car. And people started buying them. And then it all burned to the ground. The famous Curve Dash Oldsmobile went into production in 1901, and weeks later the factory caught fire, causing lots of damage. Despite this, they got the repairs done and still finished the year with some 400 cars produced. Unfortunately, Ransom himself did not have huge bags of money to support himself with, nor was he particularly good with personal finances. By 1901, he had sold off to Mr. Smith and other investors just about all of his rightful ownership of the company. Ransom and went from being the founding name of a great company to a vice president and chief engineer without any true ownership in the company anymore. He had sold his birthright. And by 1904, he had had enough. Ransom was fed up with having another man as the head of the company he founded. 
and so left the company to establish a new company with other investors. And after founding the R.E. Olds company in 1905, he was forced legally by his old masters to stop using that name. He had long before sold the rights to his own name and could no longer use it in the automotive business. Oh, there's more to say about this and what happened to Ransom in the future, but for now, keep in mind that just like Esau, Ransom Eli Olds sold his very name for the sake of urgency, not realizing the full reach of the consequences. Thanks for watching Vintage Car History, and we'll see you next week. Peace.